Hey everyone, this is Scrotum Bones here. Hopefully you're doing well today. And we have the Keeping Survivors Constantly Exposed build. And this is pretty cracked so if it works out. So we're using Starstruck here to keep survivors exposed when we pick up a survivor that's been downed. And we have to, you know, Devour Hope. You all know what that does. We just want to collect those tokens and then eventually hopefully Mori the survivors. We have Haunted Ground and Undying. And with Undying, Haunted Ground can actually trigger twice. Um, which in a few of these games I was trying to make the video um, with, that did happen a few times. But uh, anyway, yeah, let's get straight to it. So we start off in Shelter Wards, and by the way, this is a post-narration video, so we'll be just kind of analysing what we've done. The only parts I've edited in these videos, by the way, are where I pick up survivors and put them on hooks. Everything else is just the pure gameplay, apart from near the end of the second game where there was a bit of uh, stuff that I had to do, kind of waiting around to find someone. Apart from that, it's all... Uh, your gameplay apart from the hooking parts but anyway we land on the head of the Kate over here she went to the right here and then double back and kind of caught me a little bit off guard and that is a movement that people do a lot by the way um, I kind of just blinked to the window here and she slow vaulted I think she's trying to catch me out um, you know so she doesn't make a noise a noise notification when she vaults that's why she was slow vaulting but anyway I landed there and she was kind of trapped not much she could do Haunted Ground is active, by the way, if you didn't already notice. So let's see if we can get a little bit of value from Haunted Ground early on. Part of the idea of this build, we have no gen defense whatsoever, but if we can get enough pressure early on in the game with uh, with these perks that we do have, then hopefully that will help us out and you know to such an extent that gen pressure won't matter too much. That's the idea. A little bit of time left in Haunted Ground. I'm just trying to see if I can get any more value from this. We see there's a Reno over here. And blink on her back just in time to get that value. So, the Reno goes on the hook. I didn't actually realise that the um, bill had been picked up at this point. Or, I think he unbreakable really. It was kind of a quick pick up. So, I blinked back to where I thought he was, the area. Looking around a little bit. Not noticing on the right, I'm sorry, on the left hand side of the screen that he was already up. And then we realised and now we're just going to kind of blink to uh, where we think we might find some more survivors, so... Okay, she's been taken off the hook. And there is a Kate here. We went to the left a little bit there, kind of making her double back. She might be able to see us over the rock a little bit. And then I quickly blink to the right to where I think it's we're really going to be um, you know, pushing her movement. Just to catch her quickly. It's hard to really do much versus a nurse on those rocks. Um, you know, it's pretty easy for a nurse to catch someone out. On the Z wall here, she gets uh, she takes a hit here. There's Arena, so we're gonna chase her again. See if she can uh, give us a good chase. She dead hearts. She dead hearts early enough there, where I can catch her. I didn't know she had dead heart at the time, but we saw it and then we uh, we kind of reacted quickly enough. Dead heart can be a pain, so once you know a survivor has it, always keep note of who that survivor is. Yeah, you know, usually multiple survivors run dead hard in most games, so just be wary of it. Take note of who has it, who doesn't. If they sprint burst, take note of that because then they won't have dead hard. You can't really use those two perks together. And we have a bill. And we, do, we don't even have to blink that. We just catch him out. Stick him on a hook. And then... I'm going to flick over to this gen and then over here. And I believe, yep, this gen just gets done. And we're going to chase the ace here because we haven't really gone for him until now. So we're pointing to the left and then we flick quickly to the right. If he's reading our movement at all, <clears throat> or if he's just a double backer, then we can catch him. I think we might have blinked into his hitbox there. That blink... I, I keep watching this back and I... Th I think that should have gone through, but we might have blinked right on his hitbox. I think he gave us a little bit of a T-bag there, so... Yeah. Um, by the way, his scratch marks kind of confuse me here, but we see the blood and we see the see the fact that he's uh, you know run back. So we cross paths with him there with our second blink, and then slight moonwalk there, and then he just runs into us unfortunately. Anyway, Ace is down. I love that Ace head by the way with the pink rosy glasses. I kind of main Ace as a male character in this game, and I kind of want. I want to get that head. Anyway, he's on a hook. Let's see what we can do. We have Starstruck activated still. I don't know whether we're going to catch people um, with Starstruck or not. But we're just kind of looking around. I'm kind of going towards this gen to the right. 
and seeing if anyone's going for the save. Starstruck runs out now. Anyway, we catch someone over here. I think that's the Bill. Am I correct? It is the Bill. We're not going to second blink because if he does any erratic movement, he'll catch us out. Yeah, he doubled back there a little bit late. And then I, my second blink was too short. I did a little shake there because I was like, you know, kind of not happy with that blink. This blink I also wasn't happy with. I don't know why I blinked there. I know it's kind of a line of sight blink, but it's people, you know, it's just not going to catch people out really. Anyway, we blink into the ground there, he runs back towards us, and then the second blink will catch him. But on the blink previous to that, or the little bit of that chase previous, I could have caused him on my first blink, I think. Anyway, Kate has sprint burst, so she gets away there. So I think Kate and the Bill have sprint burst, the Zarina has dead hard, and um, the Ace, I don't know whether he has dead hard or, or what. But anyway, yep, yeah. she's down. She goes on a hook. And let's continue. We see scratch marks on the wall. She kind of was looking around the wrong direction there. She didn't see me coming. It, it seemed like that anyway. She was kind of creeping into that, uh, into these walls here. And, you know, walking around, kind of unaware. So, kind of an easy down because of that. And I think we actually starstruck her. I think we starstruck her there. She went down straight away if she wasn't injured I don't think she was injured but there's you know some starstruck action these people are getting exposed so often it must be a bit of a pain but as I said if this if this build works then it can be uh, really tragic for the survivors the only time it wouldn't work if you get like a really unlucky run of um, people uh, cleansing your totems and then not cleansing the ones that are left you know the haunted ones so if they cleanse like undying um, devour type thing and then don't cleanse the haunted then yeah but this ace is just kind of standing there I think he's kind of giving up or something just shining his flashlight we'll hook the ace and then we'll head back over here and hook the uh, final survivor so come on Bill after the hook we go and yeah and that's about it for this game Fun game, they were exposed a lot, and yeah, Haunted Ground early on giving us some, some nice uh, uh, some nice pressure. Okay, so we're going to be spawning into Mount Ormond for this, second, uh, for this second game here. Now, our build works really well again in this um, game, but in a different way. It kind of takes a different direction, but I'll show you how this build uh, can also really mess with the survivors. Anyway, we're doing the usual search at the start of the map. It's a big map. Uh, trying to find which corner the survivors can be on. Kind of annoying sometimes. And um, we catch a Feng here, just go to the left of that rock, or just behind the rock. She didn't really mind game it too much, just kind of ran there. Keeping that in mind, she might do that again. She might not. Who knows? Anyway, gonna do a long blink over here towards her. She goes behind that rock again. Again, just kind of runs around it the same direction, so. It, you know, she did that the first time, I thought she might do it again. Sometimes I might not second blink that if I think survivors are playing really, really erratic. But if they're playing fairly straightforward, then... Yeah, I'll maybe try and predict. Gotta get rid of this breakable wall, by the way, as Nurse. Everyone knows it. Disgusting that they even exist. What would Nurse do? What could Nurse do if he just left them there, right? Okay. This person vaults back into us, gives us an easy... Easy hit, she's insta down with Starstruck, so that's nice. I think she just mind gamed herself. Maybe she doesn't play much nurse herself and just trying to overly think things and then just doing some weird vaulting stuff. That can happen. Um, a couple of survivors in this game I have played a couple of times versus before. I don't necessarily know them, but I've seen them around. And this mech, I think she's a little bit laggy. Her movement seems a little bit weird. And the way her dead hard looks as well. I think she's a little bit laggy. Anyway, I think here. I don't know why she ran into the wall. I'm trying to wonder whether she was looking behind her, but it didn't even look like it. I don't know whether she's lagging that bad or what. I don't really know. It didn't seem like she's lagging too badly, but I definitely noticed it. So, but she just maybe was looking behind her there and just expected that she was going to be running into the uh, into that gap, but instead ran into the wall. That's probably what that was. Anyway, she's on a hook. So, we have um, 
Starstruck activated. I don't know whether we catch this person or not with Starstruck. I think they're in that locker. Here. Yeah. Blinking through the locker. They actually did get out the locker. If they were in it. I think they were, right? Anyway. This person... Were they insta-downed then? Yes, they were. You know why? Because of Devour Hope. I was looking at my perks and thinking, hmm, why is the down? I don't have my sound playing, by the way. So a lot of the sounds that you're hearing for the, for the actual game, I'm not hearing when I'm recording my voice. So sometimes I don't hear the exposed effects. Anyway. She got rid of a totem, but sadly for her, it was a haunted ground totem. They want to get rid of my devourer, but as annoying as this build is, if they get the wrong totem, they're still exposed. <laughs> They're just constantly exposed. I actually pallet slammed me. Didn't expect that. That's probably why she did it, because you wouldn't expect someone to try and pallet slam a nurse, but a decent player will do it just for a bit of fun and to catch them out. Anyway, she goes on a hook. She was exposed as Haunted Ground, of course. And they're already exposed anyway with with then Devour Hope. This Meg, again, just kind of runs into me. Maybe she thought I was going to blink a second time or something. I'm not entirely sure. But anyway, she's on a hook. And uh, let's head back. There's an unhook. Yeah, so we now have five stacks of Devour. This is awesome. Can we get our first Mori off? Blink onto this person's back there, and then gonna kill them before anyone gets a chance to uh, get rid of it. Uh, my Devour totem. And we're gonna give her the strangulation treatment. That's our first survivor down. Through so Devour Hope. She might have only been hooked once before that. Or she might have been hooked twice. Actually, I think I did hook her twice. But it's still cool just to Mori them. Moris are kind of cool. They're just for style, really. But, you know, a bit of fun. Gotta love Devour Hope. And, you know, and if someone hasn't even been hooked, you can still Mori them. So, yeah, it has such great value. If you're just trying to win a game. I flicked and turned to see if anyone was hiding behind that rock there. But no one was. I thought someone might have been hiding behind there. Around that gen that had progress. But then. Didn't find anyone. We're going to go We're gonna go back to the middle. I'm going to give this gen a tap. I don't really need to. But hey. Why not. Really just on the search for survivors. At this point. Checking if anyone's at the shack. This is where we just killed that person. I didn't know if anyone had come back to that area or not. Anyway, I do see movement in the far distance. It's the Claudette. See if uh, we can get something good going. She doubles back pretty quickly. A bit of a misdirection from her. Nice movement there. And she runs around the back of these... Uh, I think it's like a four wall or whatever this is. And then she's took some distance. This is a good way to play versus Nurse. Blocking the line of sight, taking distance, um, you know, misdirection, anything like that. I thought she might have had on, but actually in the end game I checked and this person didn't, but they did have inner strength, so maybe, yeah. And also because we're mooring people, she can get into a locker. I hope that I forget to moor her, but at, at the end of the day, I didn't moor her there. Um, purely because I actually do want a few more points on the board. If you just mori everyone straight away, the game ends really quickly and you don't get many points, so I don't generally tend to um, just mori everyone straight away. I will get some hooks where I think I can get extra hooks. If Feng runs back around into us. Um, again, you see, I'm not I'm not moriing the Feng here. I just want a few more points on the board, maybe, and try and prolong the game a little bit. I don't just want to end it all that's, you know, really quickly every time I use Devour Hope. It does mean that they could possibly cleanse a totem, but at the same time, we've got a lot of value from Devour Hope already, so, you know, I'm playing at this point for points as well. Okay, so someone was in this locker, the Claudette. I think she healed herself. Not that it matters at this point, because we have Devour Hope, but yeah, anyway, she's going to take us on another chase. Below the ski lifts. She's going to go up this ramp and then quickly jump off. But, you know, she's so close there. Um, she does that, by the way, because she has balanced landing. But even with balanced, I, I was still able to um, catch her. Just about. Anyway, I finally decide this is the time. I think she was on death hook anyway. 
so I'm worrying people on Death Oak a lot. Just like if I had a, a normal Mori. So, two people left. Let's see what happens. But anyway, you can see how this this particular build is working this time through more, you know, of Devour Hope rather than just Haunted Ground getting early pressure. We uh, kind of had long term pressure from, you know, Devour and a bit of those happy Moris. Well, at least they're happy for the killer. Anyway, we just see someone go off this gen here. See if we can catch the mag. They're slightly lagging mag. But you can, yeah, you can see that dead hard there. How how quickly it happened. It, she just kind of flew forward instantly. So definitely a little bit of a lag issue. But anyway, we caught her. And she will also bite the dust. And now it's in the final survivor. We know they're around. By the way... Of course, if I really wanted to sweat for 4k, I don't really want to moor that person there. But, I don't play like that. I'm not that bothered about whether I get 4k's or not. I just want to have fun. So we're now looking for hatch. I was checking there in case someone brought a hatch offering. That's all I was doing. I do hear the hatch here slightly. So I kind of turn back and it's right here. And now it's going to be a race for the doors because I do decide to close this hatch. Again, I could just wait at the hatch. I was considering waiting, but now I was like, no, I just cannot be bothered. Doors are on the far end. Anyway, I cut out a long little bit of waiting there. I was going back and forth between the doors. And anyway, I ended up going to this door. There was a light on it. This um, survivor did a really smart thing. Left uh, this light on the door at one light. I thought they might be hiding in the lockers. I checked around the side of the door. Couldn't find them. So they basically misdirected us over here while they went back to the other door open that so they really deserved the uh, the escape for that kind of you know um, a really nice play at the end there that, that misdirection was really cool by them so well played and yeah and that was my keeping the survivors constantly exposed build video hopefully you enjoyed it and yeah I had an awesome time it was really fun doing builds like this anyway until next time everyone take care and goodbye